tell us about the atezolizumab bladder cancer approval. So um, everybody else at this panel has had new drugs, uh, you know, over the past <laughs> few <laughs> years. Uh, but we've been waiting 30 years. 30 years. Okay. Uh, um, and then some uh, for a new drug. The last one that was actually approved in the, in the U.S. for metastatic disease, believe it or not, was cisplatin. <laughs> uh, so that's, that shows you how long we've been waiting. So uh, but we know this is that, uh, you know, bladder cancer is actually the first immunologic tumor. We were using BCG for years and actually... Uh, you know, we, we had studied and, and saw that in uh, muscle invasive disease. If you had uh, lymphocytic infiltration, CD8 positive cells, you know, patients did better stage for stage. Um, so we've known this for, for a while. Uh, and uh, so the atezolizumab study in Vigor 210 basically is what put it on the map. Uh, it, uh, you, we know about atezolizumab. It was a, uh, a straightforward uh, uh, phase two trial, an extended phase two trial of 300 patients. Uh, and uh, the, all patients were entered, but the PDL1 status was uh, uh, came back at, as an, a post hoc analysis, planned post hoc analysis. And the uh, endpoint was response um, and survival. And so uh, if you take a look at overall response, it's around 15%. That seems low, but in this patient population of previously treated patients, um, typically we see about a 10% response rate with uh, systemic chemotherapy. The taxanes are one of those, highly toxic. And so uh, if you take a look at the tezolizumab, it's 15% for all comers. For the patients who are um, uh, PDL1, 2 or 3 plus, uh, it was 28%. And in the patients who are 0, 1, it was still 8 to 10%. And if you look at those swimmer's plots, you can see that some of those patients were still uh, continuing to respond um, at a year. Uh, and then that, uh, those are the data with regard to uh, response, and that's that response and early survival uh, was enough to approve the, the drug by, by the FDA. At these meetings, uh, Rob Dreiser is uh, uh, giving an update with regard to survival. Um, the, over, the survival of the, of the uh, patients who are 2, 3 positive is 12 months, never seen before in a, in a, in a trial. Eight months uh, for the patients who are 0, 1s, and, and that rivals the best of chemotherapy, even in the patients who have low uh, expression. And then there are also studies, companion diagnostics that are being done. And, and the same thing holds with regard to mutational load. Uh, we're seeing it, no surprise, like every other disease. It's been analyzed with uh, looking at uh, gene profiles, the total number of mutations in the foundation medicine gene profile, very much parallels what we see in mutational load, lymphocytic infiltration. Um, so uh, in the, and if you look at the responders, they have a higher mutational load than those that do not. Uh, so uh, the companion diagnostic studies are really uh, similar to, to all the others. There's a separate 100 patient cohort in that um, Invigor trial that we are awaiting final data this, this weekend at ASCO uh, as first line therapy in patients who are ineligible for cisplatin based therapy. Mm -hmm. Now, cisplatin is for metastatic disease, uh, cisplatin is the standard of care, but um, this is a, a disease of older patients. Uh, smoking, a lot of comorbidities, very difficult to, to get cisplatin in these patients. Uh, 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 frequently a minority actually uh, tolerate it. Uh, so the cisplatin ineligible population, their median survival is eight and a half to nine months. And so uh, this is a, uh, the Invigor uh, 210 trial had a cohort of 100 patients who are getting first line therapy, eagerly anticipating it's, a, it's the first talk of the day, so I think it'll be exciting results uh, in terms of findings. Any, any plans on, uh, I'm, I'm sure there are, I just don't know this, but I would imagine plans to look at the tezolizumab in the earlier stages of, of bladder cancer? There is, actually. So when we think of bladder cancer, we think of, across the entire spectrum, and we have disease states, and we have uh, metastatic disease, both first and second line therapy. But then we also have muscle invasive disease, which is managed differently. And then we have non-muscle invasive disease, and we, we, we typically call it superficial disease, and it seems like it's a non-threatening disease. In point of fact, it's, it's treated with resection, TR, uh, transurethral resection, and then um, BCG. But if you take a look at the patient population, whose disease recurs, superficial uh, disease recurs within uh, 12 months in what we now call the BCG uh, unresponsive population. They're actually a very high risk population for uh, developing muscle invasive disease, going on to have nodal disease or metastatic disease. Actually, uh, it, they, the, uh, the signature so-called uh, so superficial disease sort of belies the aggressiveness. There's actually no therapy 
um, that's effective in that space. It's really, a tr it's truly an unmet need. The standard of care is a cystectomy and uh, no dissection. So a couple years ago, the FDA uh, uh, held a, an open session as to how can we best study that space. And it, and it turns out that uh, it's very hard to randomize patients, and they accepted a, uh, what would be a non-comparator uh, trial uh, 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 approval process. And now all these drugs are getting into that space. Atezolizumab is, is in that space now looking at uh, patients who have BCG unresponsive disease uh, to see if there could be uh, 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 activity. We know that once patients get BCG, there's a pretty substantial upregulation of PDL1 positivity. That's been seen already. So we know that there, it's certainly a good candidate uh, yeah. for this therapy. And what about in uh, renal cell? Any any data yet with Atezo? Um, so with Atezo, uh, there is a, um, uh, a trial. It, it turns out there was a very small trial looking uh, at Atezo plus bevacizumab. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and there was, it was actually a very elegant study, small number of patients uh, who actually had biopsies. Uh, they, they started off with bevacizumab, then got a Tezo, and then had subsequent biopsies in examining the, the tumors with regard to CDA positivity and cytokine release, et cetera. And it was uh, very interesting in how much upregulation there was with regard to lymphocytic infiltration. And bevacizumab does upregulate PDL1 in, 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 in um, renal cell carcinomas. So that's been taken further. That's now a, a, a randomized trial looking at atezolizumab plus bevacizumab versus first-line therapy, standard first-line therapy is, is sunitinib uh, in patients with metastatic renal cell carcinoma. And that trial is, is, is ongoing at the present time.